In this live training, I wanna show a quick, I mean, really quick overview of using Resi for our live streams. I'm gonna take you to the website just so you can see a little bit of uh, what it takes to um, ensure that our recordings are active, what we can do with recordings. Um, actually, I don't know how far we're gonna go, but since it's a live training, let's just take it where it takes us. Uh, let's take a look now at the website. So here we are on Resi's website. The link is here, control.resi.io. It automatically takes you to the encoders page initially. Um, and uh, so we can see encoders, the sidebar actually has lots of things. Um, in the encoder view, we can see that we could start our stream right now. So let's just say we had something that we needed an impromptu service for, um, something that we could stream just on the fly, we can hit start right now and our encoder will fire up to uh, start recording uh, essentially what is being streamed to it from our, our system. Um, now, uh, bear in mind, there are many settings related to the stream uh, that need to be in place before this is even effective, but you could use the encoder in that way manually if you wanted to. Once the encoder starts, you have what's called an encoder event. So in the events tab, uh, we can see that we have had several events in the past. Um, it has the date and time. It says how long it's gonna stay available for us to use. And let's just say I captured an event by starting the enco encoder, but I might not have streamed it yet, or I wanna stream it to a different location. Um, just because it has an encoder event doesn't mean it's actually visible for anybody on the web. Um, it just is being stored on Resi servers for us to then use at a later time. There is a small window of time, so we try to take action as soon as we can. Uh, this Sunday Service Live uh, option, for example, I could choose to start a web event and essentially take what was in that encoder from that particular event and put it out to the web right now, uh, if I wanted to. I could also watch this particular event um, or get more details about it. There's a lot you can do, as, as you can see in the pull-down menu. Um, but this isn't generally how I would effectively use uh, Resi to stream our events. I would rather have a scheduled event to make that happen. Down below uh, the encoder events section, we have web events. So encoder events have captured the Resi, Resi servers, but they haven't gone anywhere. Web events are the ones that have actually gone somewhere. So you can see in the web events section, we have a lot more that is going on. And even one encoder event could rela um, relate to like numerous web events. Uh, for example, I might capture something on Thursday evening during our capture service um, on the encoder. And I may actually send that thing out to my production website for an internal uh, unlisted view that everyone gets to see. I may then later in the weekend, uh, trim it down and send it back out so that it could be a uh, on-demand service through YouTube at our main uh, website. The web events are the events that actually go out to be seen on the web. Uh, we have it linked to our YouTube account. Uh, we have a couple Couple YouTube accounts, kids, students, college, uh, production, our main service. Each of those YouTube accounts have been linked to our Resi. We also have a Mercy Hill Facebook page uh, that our e events get streamed to as well. And we can just see a result of some of the events uh, that we've already done in the past. These will disappear in a certain amount of time. We can watch each of these events right here on Wes Resi's website if we wanted to. We can get analytics about them, um, although uh, the analytics only apply to using the Resi web player. Um, the analytics do not show us information related to like YouTube or Facebook views. Um, so just that's here. Um, whether you do anything with it or not, just know it's there. If we ever uploaded a video um, or even something that is captured through our streamer, we can see all of those videos here um, within a certain window of time. Uh, we can see them right here in the video review section. And from here, we, all we can do is simply watch them. Um, the scheduling tool is one that uh, already has pre-programmed events, as you can see, um, and we use the scheduled stuff just to make it so that it's a hands-off live stream experience for our production teams. Uh, they don't have to think about when the streamer is going to go live. They don't have to make it go live. It just goes live. Um, so we can take a look at an event like, let's say this one here um, is for um, a weekend service that starts on Thursday. Um, this Thursday capture uses a particular encoder profile. It uses is uh, this eight channel H264 encoder profile. The eight channel piece is what makes it possible for us to use our um, broadcast audio equipment for the, the broadcast um, 
mix um, as opposed to just having like an aux feed coming out of our soundboard. Now the eight channel version does also grab an aux feed as well as room mics and a keyboard. Like there's multiple channels that we feed it, um, but there are two specific channels that are broadcast mix and that's channel seven and eight. You can also see in the particular event that's going to be a result of this schedule, we are using channels 7 and 8 um, specifically for everything that we're sending out to the web on YouTube because channels 7 and 8 with the broadcast mix is going to be the best sounding mix that we can offer. Um, there are a few other things. It talks about when the event starts. The encoder starts at a different time than the stream. Uh, so in this case, the encoder starts at 545. It's recording a little bit before we actually go live at 552. Um, now this live is going to an unlisted server, uh, unlisted video on YouTube. Um, only I have access to that particular one. So I can pick and choose who gets to see that um, as an event happens. Having that control allows for us to make sure that um, information that's being shared within the room at the time of this encoder event um, only goes out to those who have um, you know, privilege to, to hear those things. Um, this particular event is a raw playback. Um, it starts way before our service starts. It ends quite a ways after our service ends. It is really just a capture of the evening. Then at a later time, I can go into the events page and I could find that particular event. I can watch it and put start and stop points on it. And then I can rebroadcast it to a different audience or um, you know, any audience I choose. Um, but I can do a couple of little edits before it actually goes live. Um, so instead of giving a, a whole three hours worth of content, I can narrow it down to a very small uh, section of content that we could use. Um, under the social media section, it just shows all of our various YouTube uh, and Facebook accounts. Some of these accounts require updates, uh, like they, they kind of expire at a certain time. And so we have to verify that those things are good. Um, but we can add multiple um, social media accounts through here. Encoder profiles is something that Resi actually sets up uh, for us in, in most cases. We can make some small modifications like the name and maybe um, the details about the, the quality of our stream, but um, for the most part, we wanna rely on Resi's expertise to make sure that these encoder profiles are right for what we do here in our location. Event profiles are something that I create as needed, and each of the different types of events may have a different profile. So in a case like this, we actually have um, some events that may be just for our staff. We have other events that are for students or our missions team. Whenever I have a special event in a location, I always try to stream specifically to their web event profile because some of the, in some cases, they may have like an embedded vi video player that they would use to watch these events. And we just wanna make sure that they're able to, um, to see those embedded players with content instead of it being um, you know, uh, a shared link that we have to send everywhere. Um, so those are event profiles. We have destination groups. These destination groups are important whenever we use the Resi encoder that's built into ProPresenter. And we have used that, as you can see, we've used it for college, uh, for students. We use it in our production team uh, for various things. Um, but um, it, a destination group is very specifically used for the Pro Presenter plugin with Resi. We pay extra for that um, to be able to have that function. And we, we do utilize it. Um, but at regional, we broadcast straight from the hardware encoder instead of from ProPresenter. It's just a much better experience. Uh, users, contacts, analytics, those things are just basically internal stuff. Um, no need to cover any of that in our tutorial today. Um, if, let's say you wanted to start an event um, uh, or schedule a stream, um, we can do that by adding a scheduled event. We're gonna make it a live event. We give the event a name. Uh, we uh, basically can use the profile name to name the event. Uh, it's an enabled. Um, we use a certain profile. We're going to add it to our encoder events, dates, times, so on and so forth. Then we add a web event to it. This is going to be example uh, YT for YouTube, whatever. We do want to make sure that we're using the proper profile. If we use default, it will only grab the aux feed that comes from our soundboard. Um, that's the pastor's mic, the handheld, and pro presenter. If we use seven plus eight, um, those two channels allow for us to grab the um, broadcast mix, which is um, mixed on a, a whole separate 
system. Um, much better event uh, sound. Uh, then we have our different profiles that we can choose from. So let's say it was a student's event. I might want to go ahead and send it directly to their profile. Um, we can then choose a destination for it. And I would say it's like YouTube students. We say it's unlisted, um, but it will be published when it goes listed. And then we give a description. Um, all right. At this point, we are ready to create that scheduled event. Um, and if we were to hit schedule, it would actually add it to our calendar. I'm not gonna do that because we don't have a specific event, um, but it would add it to our calendar here. You can also see like on Sunday, uh, we have in dark green events that will go live. Um, these are enabled streams, and this is a live stream from our locations at two, two morning services using our broadcast mix. Below that, we have these with a little uh, scratch through and they're lighter colors. Uh, these are events that would be maybe a rebroadcast of something that we did on Thursday instead of a live broadcast mix on Sunday. Let's say we had enough of our team members that were not available to actually create a, pro a quality production on Sunday morning. We may choose to rebroadcast our Thursday evening um, event instead of doing a live Sunday morning. Um, this uh, disabled event um, can just be simply re-enabled um, and then disable the other in order to flip-flop between a true live and a simulated live uh, event. That's why we have them in here and we don't change them. We just leave them enabled or disabled. Um, the, the purple ones are also there for the same reason. Um, it's like a... Uh, uh, simulated live stream option. So that's our scheduling. If you ever had any trouble with Resi or had any concerns about how Resi um, operates, you'd have to contact me um, as I am the administrator of this account, um, but I'd be happy to share more information if information is needed. Um, thanks for watching. Comment if you have questions. I'd be happy to respond to those. Um, if you're outside of our organization, you wanted a little bit more details about how Resi works, um, leave in the comments what information you're looking for specifically. And I'd be happy to create some training material to help you out on that as well. All right, thanks for watching.